Evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me on uh, this Good Friday. Uh, when I put these things together, I didn't realise it was uh, it was Good Friday. I think I've just uh, lost, lost track of days and weeks, like everybody else. Um, some familiar names on the on the list there. Um, good to uh, good to have some of you um, have some of you back, and uh, good to see some of you come back again this this week. So that's uh, that's really good. Um, we're just going to summarise uh, this last uh, case today, so it should um, just be a, fa a fairly short session today, probably about half an hour. Um, and uh, so, I want to, if people haven't kept up with the uh, uh, with the sequence of uh, of how we've gone through the case, we'll go over the uh, the case history a little bit and then uh, delve into what you guys came back with. And um, have to say that this week has been really, really good. Um, we've had some really good, uh, good. Hey, Namir, good to see you, mate. Uh, we've had some really good uh, responses this week and um, uh, show some um, uh, now some clarity in the order of doing things. So uh, it's definitely, definitely improved from three weeks ago. And uh, and that's the thing with this. It's uh, it is something that takes a bit of time uh, a time to improve. Um, and uh, Peter came up with um, uh, placed a comment on the Facebook page just this evening, and uh, we'll discuss that as well because I think that's a really good uh, valid uh, point. And the um, uh, the relationship between a clinician and a soft tissue therapist. And hey, Bonnie, good to see you. Um, uh, I mentioned you the other day, Bonnie, um, to everyone. So uh, uh, Bonnie there was the lady that I was talking about from last week um, that if you've got any clients with um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, uh, then she is a really good point of contact uh, contact down on the South Coast. Um, so Bonnie, if you want to pop your, um, uh, oh, hopefully it's okay for everyone else, um, uh, Peter. Um, so if you, if everyone can hear me, just give me a thumbs up. But Bonnie, if you want to pop your, uh, uh, website address into the uh, into the chat box that'd be great and then people can have a look at your uh, your site and where and where you work from um <laughs> yeah definitely uh okay so um how and also how, um oh good good um how, it, i mentioned um that you're uh, that you were writing a book so um uh, the last time we spoke i know that you were you were putting it together so if it is um uh, if it is coming together, then let let us know and uh, just pop it in the chat, and then we can um, uh, point people towards it uh, for you. No problem at all. So, uh, hi Catherine, hey Nicola. Um, some really good work, Nicola, th uh, this week. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, yeah. So, uh, and we're going to talk about your um, uh, your casework th this week. So it's been really good. Uh, so a quick intro um, from me again. Um, I think most of you uh, have been on before. So uh, my name is Mike and I run uh, MTE, also movement therapy clinics. And um, this past week we've been advertising this. Um, so uh, and what one of the uh, Pilates instructors that works with Bonnie down on the South Coast, Alex, uh, he's uh, been part of this Stronger Together team. So we're basically advertising um classes uh, for people all around the uk uh, to put a timetable together that anybody can go on because everything's online now so uh, your uh, your clients are everywhere they're all over well they're all over the world so uh, we had um on wednesday morning i think i mentioned it wednesday night um oh cool brilliant thanks bonnie um yeah so wednesday i might have mentioned it wednesday night but we had a girl from australia join our cl uh, our class on wednesday morning so um and then she was again she was there again uh, this morning as well so yeah it's really cool how although you know obviously a lot of change we're actually expanding um to different areas as well so making us think differently about our business so this is if you go to the movement therapy clinics uh, page then uh, there are links on there and uh, basically you click on um, click on the link and then there's a whole list of uh, classes and uh, click on a class and most of them are free um, so if you want to join in uh, just to get some ideas as well uh, for things if you if you want to have a look at that then that's fine uh, some of them have got a small charge but um, yeah we're trying to um, help all clinics everywhere so uh, if you know someone who wants to get involved as well, then just get them to get in contact with me and uh, and then we can add them to the list as well. 
Uh, we're also doing a tendon talk. I need to chat with Dan because I don't think we realised that it was Bank Holiday Monday when we put this together. So uh, I'll make sure that he's going to do it this Monday uh, coming. And uh, if he's not, then I'll post it in the group. But um, we've got a tendon talk every Monday at eight o'clock. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to be rolling that out um, over the over the coming weeks. So I've I've a feeling lockdown is going to be in place for at least another three weeks. So uh, we'll get at least another three sessions um, out of Dan, hopefully. Um, so, uh, yeah, before we do this, let's uh, let's go to that question. OK, so th this was what uh, Peter put uh, this evening in the group. So since our last session, one thing keeps bothering me deeply, uh, communication with the client and other healthcare professionals. Uh, as a soft tissue therapist, I'm not allowed to make an official diagnosis. I understand that from a legal point of view, I can only suspect potential diagnosis. Uh, therefore, even if I was 99% sure uh, that a, a client has X, I cannot tell the client what it is. Um, I have no problem with this, um, but at the same time, I should never convince clients that they have a problem uh, they might not. Okay, yeah, really good. So as they may actually feel worse just because of my stupid talk. I can't, can't imagine you ever doing stupid talk, uh, Peter. Um, yeah, that that is um, something that we call a uh, nocebo. So N O C E B O. So uh, you, it's uh, where your your words and actions can actually be worse than um, than a. Um, an official uh, disease or, or, or official problem. Um, so uh, it's just the thought of something being wrong actually makes you feel worse. So yeah, yeah, you do have to be really careful with how you communicate with clients. Uh, yeah, I need to communicate the need for a referral with sufficient justification for the referred healthcare professional to make it useful. And there is a requirement to keep good clinical notes and uh, right of the client to have a copy. OK, so how do we handle that? So I, th I think that's a really good um, uh, a really good uh, point there. So I'll, I'll, I'll just keep that up there for a second. So um, <clears throat> what I uh, what I say to obviously in the clinic I work in, we've got a multidisciplinary team. So we always um, chat with each other, even I'll, I'll chat with the physio um about patients and uh, discuss things and reflect on things and um it's it's non-stop it's it's never ending and um, because no, nobody knows everything and uh you sometimes you especially if you work on your own um we find that that it you know it's, it's quite a lonely place having your own clinic and uh and not being able to bounce ideas off people so um what I found is that uh, membership organisations. So I, I'm I, I am biased. I I am a uh, ambassador for uh, for Sports Injury Fix and also for the Sports Therapy Association. Um, but I have to say that um, the STA and Sports Injury Fix, uh, we've got Facebook groups to help people um, help their clients. So if you think something's wrong and you're not sure what to do, um, then we've got clinicians involved in those groups that can help you out. Um, we also do that on the movement therapy diploma. So uh, we've got a Facebook group for all of our students um, and past students as well that have graduated. And um, and if any of them have got any problems with a client, then they can post it in the group and then we can help them write letters like referral letters and things like that. So um, I think the biggest problem is that you leave a course and you're kind of uh, you're kind of, that's it you you're gone and uh, you can't really contact uh, the um, uh, the people again. So uh, that that's what we wanted to avoid. We wanted to make sure that you have this continuous support uh, afterwards as well. So <clears throat> I think on this, Peter, I think what uh, one of the main things you you have to do pop that back is um you you have to list your your findings so if you're going to write a letter um uh so um, bonnie i've just seen yours yeah so with the webinar for tendon talk um is on the uh at mte cpd uh page so um let me just type that in there there you go. So if you put that in Facebook, then it will come up with the tendon talk as well. That there's it's in the uh, it's in the feed. Um, yeah. So the the best thing to do. So all of the stuff we've been talking about here, um, where we're talking about the testing that you can do and the questions you can ask and the things that they've said, that's what you put in your letter. So you don't put anything that you think. You just put your findings. Um, you have to put things that are objective. And not subjective. 
Okay, so uh, um, and uh, and I mean your your subjectivity. So if you think it's a certain condition, um, you uh, obviously if you're a soft tissue um, therapist trained, you you can't um, well you can, but you're not supposed to give that kind of thought across. So all I would do is I would list. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. So um, I had a patient in a couple of um, couple of months ago now. And uh, I'd seen her before. She'd had um, uh, she had some issues um, da down her leg. It was it was kind of because um, sciatica, but sciatica is a symptom. It's not a diagnosis um, because there's loads of different reasons for sciatica. So sciatica isn't the diagnosis. So um, uh, her she she'd had had this um, issue for a while and um, had never ever had any neurological deficits at all. Okay. Um, but then um, one time we tested her, she had, uh, and it was different. Everything about it was really different. So um, uh, I tested her reflexes. We did all the uh, sensitivity testing for the, uh, for down the leg, we did a power testing for the foot and the um, uh, and the and the knee and the um, so for the quads and the hamstrings, and uh, that there, there were clear um, issues with her neurological testing. Okay, so um, I wrote uh, a letter for her, and uh, and I said, look, um, this is different from what you've come in with before. Uh, I'm I'm not really happy with your symptoms. So I'm going to write you a letter and I want you to go to your GP to um, to see what they say to get this checked out. OK, so I, I wrote down then all of my findings and um, uh, she took the letter with her. Uh, so I, I printed it off for her there and then. And uh, and then as soon as she got to the doctors and the GP read the letter, uh, he immediately booked her in for an MRI. OK, so um, he I didn't say what I thought it was but he knew from the testing that I did what it probably was. Yeah. So I made it so obvious what I thought it was. And um, see, even as an osteopath and I can diagnose, um, I can't make a diagnosis with, with just my uh, clinical testing in the clinic. I can, I can have a clinical impression of what I think might be happening, but there could be a number of different reasons why she was getting sciatica symptoms down, down her leg and a, and a loss of power. So, um, uh, I, and also you shouldn't put those things in the letter. Oh, I think there's a disc herniation at this level. So therefore I, I need this because um, you, you would never know until you get the imaging through. You can, have a, a, you can have a very, very good idea, but you will never know for sure until you get the imaging. And even then, the imaging and the symptoms may not match, okay? So, uh, so the, uh, the MRI isn't the diagnosis, it's the combination of the findings from the objective findings, the subjective history, and the imaging. Yeah, so it's all of that together that is then pointing you towards a diagnosis. Um, so I think, look, short um, answer, Peter, is list all of your objective findings that you have. And yes, your notes which should include those things. So if, uh, if a client ever wanted your notes um, and they can request them, uh, then, uh, then th they should be writ written out in that way. And we've, we've mentioned about SOAP before, so they should follow that. Uh, subject, subjective objective assessment and plan uh, format okay so uh, hopefully that that helps um, if if not then write me some more questions and I'll I'll see if I can uh, help out some more um, so uh, this is uh, this is the what we've been up to and we're down to our justification now so uh, we're on the third session uh, what do we do uh, what do we do with this lady Anna who's come in so these were the key points from Anna so if you've not seen the case before this is a summary of uh, what we had so as she was a 62 year old female she was underweight and had not visited the GP for a long period of time okay so uh, that those things um, cool thanks Peter um, she had a, a poor diet a few of you picked up on that and uh, were linking that especially she, her poor diet was described as um, lots of sugary uh, snacks and, and chocolate and things like that so that and, and she had uh, thrush as well so there were things that were pointing towards uh, potentially diabetes uh, which was really good I think um, most of you picked up on that um, she was a smoker 
uh, drank a lot as well. So some of you picked up on the fact that there may be a liver problem. Um, there weren't really many, many signs around that, but uh, it was a potential, definitely. Um, her mother had a skin complaint and she was on prednisone. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And Nicola did some great work on that um, over the last couple of days. Uh, both feet were tingling and painful, described as numb. And she'd had that for six months and it was getting worse. OK, she had urinary urgency. Uh, obviously the thrush that we talked about before and stress incontinence so we had some changes in bladder habits which is a real uh, big red flag um, because she also had chronic uh, lower back pain and she'd had uh, kind of episodic um, uh, worse periods so uh, yeah th there were there were clear signs there that um, that that is a an immediate um, referral to A&E um, because of um, uh, potential called requina uh, syndrome OK, so uh, that wasn't the main thing in this case, but from all of the information there, she would have gone to A&E if, if it was if she was coming to see me. OK, so uh, uh, she had bilateral quadriceps pain uh, with weakness and she'd had that for two months. It was worse in the morning, worse going upstairs. Rest helped. Uh, but she could still feel the symptoms. OK, so that that's an interesting one that. So if you think it's a muscle problem, like the quads are weak. Um, it could be, but usually if you rest, they feel better. Yeah. So if at rest they're sore as well, there's something else going on there. Okay. It, it, it's uh, it's all kind of um, leading you towards some kind of uh, pathology rather than a musculoskeletal issue. So um, uh, yeah, you came up with some really good things. So these were some of the ideas uh, from your um, input in the Facebook group. So we had uh, neuralgia parasthetica, um, and uh, this is a, a problem with the lateral cutaneous nerve, um, which is in the, uh, let me just pop this up here. Uh, it, it is a nerve that is a sensory nerve that supplies the lateral thigh. Okay, um, I'll just see if I can get it up on here a second. Bear with me a second. Okay, I'm just going to switch over to a different view. I think um, we covered this a little bit anyway on uh, on Wednesday. So um, if anybody's interested, this is complete anatomy. Um, it's on my um, uh, it's on my Mac. It's re uh, it's really good. But they do do a an iPhone version as well. I think it's essential anatomy. It's called. So if we turn on uh, some of the nervous system stuff here, put another layer in. Here we go. OK, so if I just drag that up there. So uh, there's your ASIS there. There's your pubic tubercle. And uh, between the two, we've got a ligament. Um, but called the uh, inguinal ligament. And that nerve, if I can just get on the nerve, that one just there, that's the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, okay? So it's a, um, it's not a motor nerve, so it doesn't make any muscles work. It's a purely sensory nerve, so it supplies the skin of the lateral thigh. And uh, when you have diabetes, uh, you, you have problems with your nerves because of um, problems with swelling and compression. And uh, the one of the nerves that's often affected with uh, diabetes is that one. OK. And uh, I think it was Natalie that um, came up with uh, with that as a potential uh, diagnosis. So that was that was really good. Um, I'm just going to show you this. So this is a paper from the Annals of Surgery. So the um, Neuralgia Parasthetica, the elusive diagnosis. So uh, we've got, uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a mononeuropathy, so it only affects one nerve of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve that can lead to significant disability when the diagnosis and treatment is delayed or missed. The condition is relatively common, uh, but is frequently mistaken for other disorders. OK, so um, one of the reasons why uh, we included uh, or that was included in the case was because it is often it's, it's often confused for a femoral nerve tension. OK, so um, 
because uh, the femoral nerve supply um, supplies the motor uh, part of the um, of the thigh, okay, and sensory as well. But uh, yeah, that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is purely sensory, and it can be mis uh, misdiagnosed. Okay, so that's uh, uh, that's uh, was really good. I think um, some of you uh, came up with that one anyway. So that was uh, that was excellent research. Uh, then we had uh, these two, so uh, polymyositis and uh, dermatomyositis from the mum. Uh, and this was from Nicola, I think. Uh, when can... um, are you, uh, Bonnie, do you mean the nerve wouldn't account for ba uh, bladder and bowel control? Is that what you mean there? Um, so, uh, yeah, polymyositis and dermatomyositis. So, um, the uh, really, really good. This so, uh, the mother was uh, had a skin problem and she was on prednisone. Okay, and uh, we'll talk about that in a uh, in a sec. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so if it was the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, that wouldn't um, the, the, that level, so L3 could affect bowel and bladder function, um, but um. Uh, but the uh, usually the compression of that nerve is around the inguinal ligament area uh, rather than the nerve root, but it could be nerve root as well. So uh, it, it wouldn't be the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve that would cause the bowel bladder problems, but um, they could be linked. OK, so, yeah, it was a good question. Yeah. Uh, OK, so um, uh, Let's have a look at this uh, polymyositis. Let's just go forward here a good bit. So, this was um, w when we when we had this as a as an exam. Uh, this was uh, one of the uh, main um, diagnoses for the, for this case. Okay, so uh, well done, Nicola. Really good. Um, so myositis is usually caused by a problem with your immune system, where it mistakenly attacks healthy tissue. Okay, uh, polymyositis, uh, which affects many different muscles, particularly the shoulders, hips and thigh muscles, is more common in women, it tends to affect people from the ages of 30 to 60. And they usually have muscle weakness. OK, so uh, it's all stacking up, um, uh, aching, aching or painful muscles and feeling very tired. Uh, they find it hard to sit up or stand up after a fall. Uh, sometimes have uh, swallowing problems or hard uh, holding up their head, um, a, a feeling of depression and unhappiness and suddenly getting worse if they don't get any treatment. So there were quite a few things that pointed towards that as a diagnosis. And the other thing that was a big clue in there was the fact that the mom had this skin condition that was being treated with prednisone. And that was likely to be dermatomyositis. And the two are linked. Okay, so they're they're from the um, the same family of diseases. So that was a really good, uh, really good find. That Nicola, well well done. Um, so if we have a look here, these were some of the clinical impressions that we had. Uh, so peripheral artery disease because of the numb feet, poor lifestyles. So that will be a, a, a GP referral. Uh, lumbar spine um, compression fracture. That will be off to A and E disc herniation um you do that be off to the gp and these are some of the tests that you can do so you can do a straight leg raise a slump test lump, uh, lower extremity neuro test okay um and uh, th this goes into your question as well peter um now th there's a real big problem at the moment in our industry with um, very short courses teaching you how to do these things and um they uh, they don't assess you OK, and uh, but both Gary at the STA and myself, we've had several conversations about this. So if you um, assess someone, you did a lower extremity neuro after doing a one day course. If you stood up in court and they said, well, where's your competency? Um, you, you couldn't use that course unless there is an assessment attached to it. OK, you have to be assessed using these skills to become competent. Uh, so that, that there is a bit of a blurred line with some of the courses out there at the moment. So be really careful um, with what you think you could do after doing some of those, because you need to be assessed. And even me as well, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to do acupuncture, for example, um, I, I could do a two day course in acupuncture. But unless that course is assessed, I'm not competent. 
Uh, e even with my medical background and as an osteopath, I'm still not competent because I haven't been assessed by someone who is competent in the use of acupuncture. So that there has to be some kind of case study or exam uh, attached to the course that you do. Okay, it's re really, really important. Um, so ho hopefully that that helps um, clarify some things as well. Um, so the uh, tarsal tunnel uh, test, um, and, th and this is the thing, I think, this is the reason why I've gone through these, is to show you that um, sometimes it's it's just beyond. Uh, I mean, sometimes beyond my remit. So I would I would forward it to someone else. Um, it's knowing where your remit is. So uh, if you feel uncomfortable treating someone, or you think there's something not quite right, you think it's something like this. Even if you don't know what the diagnosis is, it's just something that doesn't feel good to you. Then um, you you should refer it. Um, your uh, your patient should. Um, should um, thank you for that, okay? Because you're looking after them at the end of the day. And uh, no, no worries, Peter, that's fine. Um, so uh, yeah, all of these tests that I'm suggesting down here, unless you've been assessed doing them, yes, you can do them, but your interpretation of the results um, could be brought under question, okay? Um, unless, you've had, uh, unless you've had the assessment done. Um, so uh, with diabetes, you would do a, um, a lower extremity neurological test because they, they get, um, will get often depends on how far down uh, the line they are. They can end up with peripheral neuropathy. And we talked about that on Wednesday. Uh, so they can have pins and needles tingling in the feet. Uh, Corda equina, that was the one that I, um, I because of the urinary urgency and the back pain. That to me is a real raging alarm, red flag. And um, and they should uh, they should go off uh, to uh, to A and E. Um, I'll see if I can find uh, something. I did. Um, uh, I'll see if I can find it. I did um, like a check sheet. I, if I, I'll post it in the group after we're done. Uh, I did a checklist for Corda Equina. And uh, if they have any of those symptoms, then it's like a red flag. And uh, so uh, when um, when you're going through your questioning, you ask these questions. And if they're ticking the questions, you give them the card and then they take it to A&E. Um, because sometimes people with cord or equina will go to A&E. They won't explain it very well. And then they get sent back home again. OK, because the, the person might just think they've got a bad back. So you need to make sure that they have some documentation that they've seen someone that, and uh, and you're worried about their symptoms. OK, so uh, it's uh, it's called safety netting. So uh, I'll show you the safety net card that I've I've put together and I'll, I'll put it in the group. Um, so polymyositis was the big one. So we've got her age, the bilateral thigh pain, the skin condition that a mother had. So we think it was dermat uh, dermatomyositis. Uh, the muscle weakness, the tiredness, and the difficulty climbing stairs. Okay, so that would be a referral to the GP. Um, usually, they would have blood tests done. They would have a muscle biopsy done, an MRI, and EMG studies. Okay, so that those are the things that they would usually um, have done to confirm the diagnosis of uh, poly, uh, polymyositis. Um, the femoral nerve tension. So because of the pain in the thighs, it was less likely. Okay, we can still stick it in there. Um, and we would do a femoral nerve tension test for that. Okay. Um, and uh, if you have a look on physio tutors, uh, the guys there are really good and uh, that they'll, they'll have a femoral nerve tension test um, on there. And then we had the liver disease as well. Okay. So uh, that was a kind of um, overview, the reasons why, and then the next steps um, for this particular patient. Uh, I've gone over that. Cool. Right. Let's have a look at this. So this is. Um, uh this is prednisone so uh this is from the myositis association okay um and they've got a little piece on here about corticosteroids which is the drug that the mother was on okay so um uh, prednisolone uh, prednisolone or prednisone is a uh, corticosteroid so uh yeah so corticosteroids commonly used as a first line treatment with fairly rapid results for dermatomyositis polymyositis uh, myopathies and juvenile myositis. So what they do, so such as prednisone, slow the body's immune system and stop the inflammatory attack on muscles. Okay, so that's what that drug uh, does. So that that's why the mum was on it because she had 
dermatomyositis. So if you if you know that the mother is on prednisone, there must have been some kind of um, autoimmune inflammatory condition. Okay, and if it was to do with the skin, then we can deduce it was that. So well done, Nicola. That was uh, that was really good. All uh, right, let's go back to that one. Okay, so that was prednisone. And if you have a look on the myositis uh, website, um, all the details of that drug are on there. One other thing to look at is um, something called the BNF. Um, so if you have a look for the BNF app uh, on the App Store, it's, uh, it's definitely on iPhone because I've got it, it's free. Um, and it is the list of every single drug in the UK. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, the BNF app is, is a list of every single drug in the UK. So when a patient comes in, if they're on a drug that you've never heard of before, don't just go, all oh, right, that's nice and write it down. You need to find out what it is, what the side effects are, um, and what, what is it for? What does it do? Okay, so there is something to reflect on when after you've um, uh, after you've seen the patient, but also ask them as well, because um, there's some drugs I've never heard of before. So I'll need my BNF to check it and to see uh, to see exactly what they are. It used to be a massive book. Uh, now it's on an app, so you can really quickly search for things and um, uh, give it give it to the patient to have a look as well. So that's uh, that's really worth um, having a look. Uh, would you immediately avoid any other forms of testing when you suspect a red pad like cord or equina? Yes, probably, Namir. Yeah, good. Uh, good point. Yeah, so if um, uh, if if there were changes in, in bladder habits with bad back, gone. Yeah, I wouldn't even do anything else. Um, so, uh, and the, the, this is the thing, right? This is the thing with sieving. So when someone comes in and they, and they go, right, okay, how can I help you today? Or you say, how can I help you today? And they say, oh, it's my back that hurts. And then they, t they start talking about it. And then I say, well, um, have you had any changes in bowel or bladder habits? And they, and if they say yes, boom, they're straight out. If they say no, I'll carry on and I'll, I'll and they go, right. Does it go down your leg? No. Okay, cool. Right. Carry on. Yeah. Um, if it does go down the leg, right now, I need to do a new a lower extremity neuro exam. Does it go down the other leg as well? Yes. Right. You're gone. So it, it's that it's that kind of thing where you go, right, Siv, do I refer or do I carry on? Do I refer or do I carry on? And uh, the more you understand about uh, red flags and why you're asking the questions, the, the more you can kind of stack them up in your head. And, uh, and you can tick them off as you go um, to, to keep that person safe. Okay, so um, yeah, really good question, Amir. Well done. Um, cool. That's it for today. Uh, really good. Um, I am planning on doing uh, the next OSCE on, on Monday. Okay, so if you guys are up for it, uh, then uh, I've, I've no problem with doing um, Monday, uh, Bank Holiday Monday or Easter Monday. Uh, so uh, I'll come back at, at six, uh, prepare a new OSCE uh, over the weekend and uh, and then we'll run through it again. Okay, it was a really good one this week. Uh, some really good uh, research, really good answers. Uh, you're starting to get the hang of it. Um, I think you're realizing that we don't we don't ever treat any of these people, but it's it's the fun, if if you can call it fun, is trying to find out exactly uh, what's going on. Okay, so that and that and that's the thing, that's the key. Okay, so uh, figuring it out because there isn't an answer. We're just trying to figure out our our way through it. Okay, um, thanks every um, everyone. Don't eat too many Easter eggs, and uh, I'll see you uh, see you Monday. Cheers, guys.